I know it's stupid. I'm feeling rotten. I chose polyester instead of picking cotton. Now old Joan Rivers, she just goes bowling alone. Welcome to Breakfast Time with Lori Hibbert, Tom Bergeron, and Bob the Puppet. Sitting in for Lori today is Patricia Moreno. My name's Jim and I'm the announcer. Say good morning, Tom. Good morning, Tom. How about a hand for yeah. Patricia? Bandit. That's right. Rangers. Patricia, who is going to be filling in for Lori, who has taken the day off today. Yeah. And uh, are we going to mop her down at all? Before <laughs> we start? Okay. This is the first time you should know. I've been in, in broadcasting and cable casting for a long time. It's the first time I've actually worked with a co-host who can bench press me. <laughs> which I'm... Which I'm yeah, so keep that in mind. Uh, well, you, right. you ready? I'm ready. You ready? I'm ready. You, I'm ready. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Now, do we have... Are you going to change into... Are you going to oh, stay in Spanish? No, you look fine. You look great. Do I intimidate you wearing this outfit? A little. <laughs> a little. A little. Especially okay, when you I'll flex. Change. All right. No, you, you, we'll, just, we'll just sort of play it by ear. Okay. Got a lot of fun stuff today. But I was wondering if, as, as Patricia and I walked down to, uh, to the kitchen, could we get a little tuba music? Because, you know, the holidays just aren't complete without tuba music. Hmm. Are they ready down there? Just uh, fire up those tubas, guys. Something upbeat. It's Terry, could I have my notes? <laughs> Apparently they all have gastrointestinal problems. <laughs> See you, Rangers. Bye. You know what? If you want to exercise behind Patricia for the whole show, that would be good. That would make me feel better. Now, now your 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 key task is to really make me look good. That's the... that's a tough one. Even Lori can't do that. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> we have, in addition to the tuba Christmas people, we've got the Bobster here. Bob, how are you? Hey, Tom. Welcome back. You were on vacation, huh? Tom, did you get the bee sting lip thing since I saw you last? Yes, I'm pouting. <laughs> hey, Tom. You nice tan. Nice what? tan, Tom. <laughs> Would you spend your vacation under a rock? Yeah, Look at thank him. you. Pasty. <laughs> Go change, Patricia. That's not the outfit we want. You? He looks a little bit. He's still talking, I think. Yeah. Hey, come back here. How about you. a hand for Harvey Phillips and his tuba orchestra? Yeah. Wow. It's not Harvey Phillips? Who is it? Bill. It's Bill. Is it Bill Phillips? <laughs> well, let's it's go say hi to Bill. Bill Phillips Souza. I'll be right back. Go on, Patricia. Go on. <laughs> yeah. Ba, ba. Wonderful. How about a hand for our tuba yeah. guys here? Yeah. And, and Bill, what's your last name? Troiano. Now, who's Harvey Phillips? Well, Harvey Phillips is, uh, uh, he used to play in the New York Philharmonic in New York, and um, he's recently retired professor of music at Indiana University. And he organized the tuba Christmas It was his concept, yeah. his idea to uh, organize tuba players first in a tuba Christmas situation oh. in 1974. All right. Pretty much to... I don't want his whole resume. Just yeah. a quick answer yeah. would be... Would well, he wanted to bring recognition to the <laughs> instrument. All right, but Bill, you're, you're leading the... These tuba Valor guys Oak take their time, Tom. Uh -huh. These they? tuba guys take their time. They do. And yeah. you're going to be with us We have a lot to say. That's right. You're going to be with us for the whole show? <laughs> I think so. Tuba uh, Christmas carols. Wonderful. It's good to have you here. Yeah. Where's uh, Patricia? She's over here getting changed into... What, are they miking you now? Yeah. All right, now, so, so you're going to do news. We're going to do news. Right, and then we drop for 20. That's right. And then we just keep going with we the show. We just keep All going. Right. All right, good to have you with us. Okay, I'll Patricia see Moreno filling in for Lori today. Since we saw you last time... Hi, Tom. Who is that guy? Welcome. Since we saw you last time, 300 million Christmas cards and letters were sent across the country by all of us getting ready to celebrate uh, the holidays, which is why we're happy to have our Tuba Christmas gang with us and happy to have you here. Our road warriors across the country, as always, Phil Kogan. First of all, Phil, thanks for filling in for me, uh, you and John Davis, while I was on vacation. Well, it's nice to have you back again, you know, Tom. I was sorry I missed James Brown singing Jingle Bells. Maybe we can get a tape of that to play a little later. Well, you, you really missed something there, yeah, Tom. Yeah, I bet I did. Okay. Uh, a little Phil more memorable morning. than those tubers. Uh, Phil is with us in, is it Flowers View, Florida? Fl uh, uh, Flowers View, yes, it, which is a, a very small community uh, of about 200, in fact. Today I'm uh, with uh, Gladys Milton, and she has probably brought, well, she has brought more people into the world, a total of about 3,000, which is more than the population of Flowersview will ever get to. Uh, <laughs> and right now we have uh, a little baby that uh, Gladys has helped bring into the world. This is Jenna over here with her, uh, with her sister. Yeah. And today we're going to meet a very special woman, Tom, a midwife uh, who has a book which is uh, out called uh, Why Not Me and also a feature, fil com feature film coming out later on about uh, her life 
very special person that we'll be meeting up with later, and we're also going to meet some of the parents and the children that uh, she has helped here in this small community uh, near Pensacola. Uh, Gladys' bodyguards on the couch right That's behind right. her there. That's an entourage. That's indeed. Uh, also, Suzanne joins us. Suzanne Wong is in Portland, Oregon, at the home of the Garden Burger. <laughs> Suzanne, you must be very proud. Yum. I am very proud, Tom. Now, how was your vacation? Did you eat healthy during your vacation? I, if, if napping were an Olympic event, I would be a gold medalist. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're like me and you want to eat healthy, but you can't stand the way the healthy food tastes, yeah. then you're going to want to stick around for this segment. I'm here at the home of Paul Wenner, the founder of Wholesome and Hearty Foods Company and the creator of the Garden Burger, made with all vegetables and it tastes great. We're going to learn all about the Garden Burger and find out some things that you can do at home in the That's morning to eat too. a healthy breakfast. All right, good enough. That's uh, coming up. Can we have a little, uh, I, I don't know if, if, if you're ready for this, but a little background tuba Christmas carol music, Bill. Just something, yeah, just anywhere. Just to be, believe me, yeah. walk wherever you want on this show. Normally this little, we're a lot more structured than little, this. But, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, do you have something upbeat? A little, uh, yeah, just anything else. The jingle well, bells. Jingle bells can, can you play Stairway to Heaven? <laughs> All right, now, what you see on the streets of New York is, is uh, apart from being a bad signal, is a van, which is a mobile therapy van, and in it, Dr. Shelley Lennox and Dr. Ursula Strauss, who have created uh, for stressed executives this van where you can get therapy on the way to work. And apparently they're counseling each other right now, which is <laughs> fairly incestuous, isn't it? But uh, before we go to news, and Patricia, who I know is getting ready to give us spandex news, uh, can we have just a little bit of a, a holiday tune? I'll be going into the mobile therapy van a little later, by the way. Ah, boy. Oh, what fun <laughs> is to ride on a one horse all the day. Bell, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I like to have a tuba for the holiday. Thank you so much, Dr. Brown. Thank you, guys. Okay, all right. Right. The tuba going, everybody. Yeah. There you go. Short selection oh, for Tom. your holiday pleasure. Yes, Bob. This is great music that's also a laxative. <laughs> <laughs> is Bob all right? Does he look no. good to you? No. Let's take a look at some of this Monday's top story, Spandex News with Patricia Moreno. Thanks, Tom. The news is the FBI is stepping up its investigation of mail bomb killing over the weekend. The victim was a New Jersey advertising executive. Officials believe the bomb is linked to more than a dozen mail bombs sent over the past 16 years. O.J. Simpson's lawyers are reportedly planning to skip a pre-trial hearing on DNA evidence. CNN reports this morning that the defense team would rather make their case on genetic evidence directly to the judge rather than, excuse me, directly to the jury rather than to the judge. This will help hide the defense strategy from the prosecution. President Clinton is trying to make good on another of his 1992 presidential campaign promises. He says he's all for middle, tax, tax, middle class tax cut if the government can pay for it. The first semi-synthetic version of cancer-fighting drug Taxol has been approved by the FDA. This means relief for the endangered Pacific yew tree, which has been used to make Taxol for years. And disclosure, the steamy movie about sexual harassment was the biggest draw at the box office, what, over the weekend? There's a leak in the ceiling, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh -huh. Oh, nice job. Thank yes. you. Let's see uh, where else it's leaking across the country, Jim. <laughs> well, and actually it is leaking in certain places, but today's weather is brought... More amazing than that, you know how many sponsors he's had already on the weather? <laughs> Polaroid, who else? Taster's Joys, ne Nestle. That's the, Nestle's refrigerated cookie dough. All these companies are clearly aren't watching what he's doing uh, with their sponsors. Mercedes-Benz, oh, we've had uh, right? Rolls-Royce, uh, we've had uh, Beluga oh, Caviar. He does go on. Uh, <laughs> Patricia and I will be back uh, with more of Breakfast Time. Uh, Patricia here for Lori. Little tuba Christmas music taking us to break. And Jim, what else is coming up? Birthing babies, the traditional way. How it's done on breakfast time. Good morning, Patricia, my little biological sphere. Like that, sir. 
No, she's in the bathroom, but I need to get in there. Hello, Patricia, my little biological spear. All right, uh, Patricia, be careful with that spandex, won't you? I know you can't talk back, but, you know, just be careful with that spandex. Well, uh, we're going to chat for a bit. Yes or no? Uh, a nail polish and stuff. Do you mind? Do you mind? Morning, Tom. I'd love the, the image of you doing it. Morning, Tom. Uh, hi, Phil. Anybody among our tuba players want to have their nails done? <laughs> would you? What's your name? <laughs> what's your first name? Jennifer. Jennifer. Perfect. Would you do? Would you do Jennifer's nail? It's 13 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Tom. Patricia sitting in for Lori, Bob the Puppet, and me, Jim. I'm the announcer, and here's Tom amidst the tubas. That's all oh, we got, tubas extraordinaire. <laughs> Look at it, take a shot of all of the tuba players we have here, bringing us festive holiday sounds of tuba Christmas. There were over 300 tuba players at Lincoln Center yesterday, is that right? At Rockefeller Center? At one of the fine centers here. <laughs> in Manhattan. And thank one... God most of them were not available this morning. Yeah, that's... <laughs> is... Now, is there a busload of tuba players showing up later or? This is it. Well, that's all right. That's, uh, that's probably Mercifully good so, thing. yes. We have uh, visiting us from Hollywood, Florida. By the way, I should mention Patricia is just being despandexed <laughs> right now, and she'll be joining us. Uh, she's no, in her, 11. <laughs> her medically sealed room. It's a very painful process. That's right. Too, Spencer yeah. and I are here with uh, the Guadalupe family. We have uh, Esther and Elias from uh, Hollywood, Florida. Is that right? Now, I understand, and we love it when we hear this, that you refuse to do any uh, work around the house until our show is done. Is that right? That's right. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's a great thing. Uh, and and uh, you also do uh, nail uh, work? You, you, you take care of people's uh, nails and such? Because we have Jennifer over there, the antler-laden tuba player, who would love to have her nails done. Because as you can imagine, good nails and tuba playing go <laughs> hand and yeah. lip. <laughs> it's you, almost you, crucial, yeah. Would you mind? Uh, no, not at all. All right. And Eliza, so you're, you're a, what do you do uh, other than wait? I'm a uh, nursing assistant. A nursing assistant yeah. in Hollywood, Florida? Yeah. Yeah. And you actually came up here to visit your aunt? Right. Is that right? And what's your name? Doris. Doris, Aunt mm -hmm. Doris. Yep. And uh, you've already taken sort of a shining on Bob, I can see. Yeah. Yes. Hubba yeah. hubba. Yeah. Good looking guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's hook her up to the sincerity meter, huh? Yeah. yeah. And, and We've been your... told to fear Aunt Doris, by the way. <laughs> oh, is that right? Are you dangerous? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Patricia oh. to the left of me, on Doris to the right, and we have your sons, your three sons. Ba -da -da -da, ba -da -da -da. We have Robert, Johnny Jr., and Michael. And Michael, you're four years old. Let me go, come around, Bob. Here, are you four years old? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, we'll keep the question simple. Good. Okay. Good to have. What? What? Can you uh, do Phil? Can I? Can yeah. I intro yeah. Phil? Where, where's Patricia? Excuse me, Guadalupe. Excuse me, Spencer. Where's yeah, Patricia? They ran into a problem with one of the schedule, layers. Right. Patricia does the next segment. I mean, when Lori's here, I don't have to suddenly start doing <laughs> not a pro. She's not a yeah. pro. No. Well, Lori Come doesn't here. do the warm-up. Yeah, yeah. Are you? You look lovely. I'm just tying my look, shoe. All right, Come you on, tie your it. shoe. Here's a monitor right here, and you can intro okay. Phil okay. while you're tying your shoe. Patricia That's Moreno right. well, introing like, Phil oh. while she ties her An shoe. An amazing feat. Where is Phil? <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to have Phil. Do a dude He's on working the with. He's in Flowers View, uh, Florida. He's in Flowers View, Florida. Gladys Milton. With mid midwife Gladys Milton. They're delivering babies. <laughs> yes, Patricia. Yes, Phil. Patricia, before before we do that, just take a look at that beautiful wow, sunrise. Wow, that is you? beautiful. Isn't that nice? Yeah. And we are we're in uh, Flowers View. It's a very small population here, only about 200 people. But today we're going to meet a very special woman, who has been delivering babies since 1958. And uh, in 1976, she set up her own birthing center uh, as part of an extension of her home. We're going to come right in here. You know, Patricia, it's not normally cold in Florida, but today it was about uh, 36 degrees. So we've got a fire going over here. Would you believe? And uh, this is Gladys Milton. Patricia, I'd like you to meet Gladys Milton. Let me Hi, Gladys. Hand up nice there. to meet you. Now, Gladys is 70, year old, uh, 70 years old, Patricia, and she has brought a lot of children into the world, up to 3,000. Let's walk this way, up, um, Gladys. Up to 3,000 uh, wow. children. And she is a midwife. Now, a midwife is something, well, choosing a midwife is something that only about 5% uh, of the population do. Gladys, Oops. could you tell us why only... Let's Oops. go down this way, Gladys. 
Could you tell us why um, so few people choose midwife, uh, choose a midwife as a way to give birth, and yet it's, it's in your opinion, a lot of times they don't feel comfortable, you know, because they they think of birth as an illness. And birth really isn't an illness, is it? No, it's a natural form of life. Just come no down. illness. All right, all right. And this is where you want me to turn around, eh? Yeah, this is where I'd like you to turn around yeah. you, because we'd like to see your pretty little yeah. face, you see, How otherwise... How that? Thank you. You look very nice here. Now, you've been doing this here since 1976, up to 3,000 babies you've helped no, bring into the world? 59. 58 was when you started, right? Yeah, 59. 59. A lot, a lot of babies you brought into the oh, world. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. And, Patricia, if you look over here, you'll see this is Maria right now, who is uh, listening to Jessica's baby, and Maria is going gonna, is gonna to continue doing what you've been doing for such oh, a long yes. time. I'm passing a torch to her. And tell me, Maria, how did you get into becoming a midwife? Because I understand you were in your final year of uh, medicine, becoming a doctor, and then you changed direction. I finished pre-med curriculum, and then I decided to go into the midwifery program, which would give me an opportunity to use a lot of the pre-med experience that I had. And Gladys, she, she had a miracle, didn't she? Sure, sure. She doesn't like for me to say that. She's modest. But she saw a miracle. She saw the good Lord start a baby that normally he starts us all, but I mean, he did a special start on this baby. And she had walked away and the father had gone out and I was doing mouth to mouth resuscitation. And, and I, in fact, I'm, 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 I'm a country girl. I don't mind saying this. And uh, the, uh, I, I say the prayer, I couldn't pray aloud. But in my heart, I say the prayer, and I say, the, uh, good Lord, not for me, but for those who stand around, show your power. And you did. The minute I said it, she pinked up from head to foot and <laughs> let out a squall you could hear down on the corner. Maria <laughs> ran over, the father ran back in and everything, and it was something. You could just feel his presence in this room, and I'm not afraid to say that. Well, I, th I think shame to say that. I think you can definitely pick up a you know a very special spirit in here, uh, Patricia. And one of the thing, great things about uh, having a midwife is the fact that there is the intimacy and there is the specialness, the closeness. You can see Jessica and her partner right here, who have come in for a uh, prenatal checkup, and and both of them are doctors here. And I just wanted to ask you why you've chosen to 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 come here to this birthing center to have your child as opposed to going to a uh, to a hospital. Um, we both see birth as, birth as a natural process, and this was one of the few places that we found that had that same philosophy and didn't do the invasive procedures that we were looking to avoid. Phil? You'll do any minute, right? Any moment. Yeah. <laughs> what happens if there's an emergency? Well, one of the things that uh, Gladys does is that Gladys is very careful about the people that, that come here. Uh, and Gladys, if you could just answer the question for Patricia. The, the, the mothers that do come here, expected mothers that do come here, you've been very careful about who you choose to, to give birth here, correct? Yes, I want to make sure that this is what they want to do and we don't give sedatives here. And that is one thing that I don't want to do. Yeah. Because once the mother gets the sedative, then the baby does too. Uh, Patricia, what they do is they choose, they choose situations that, uh, that are safe and make sure that they are safe. But there is a hospital that's about five miles down the road, so if there is a problem, they can always deal with that. But this is a healthy experience, as uh, Gladys says. When we come back, we're going to be sp speaking more with Gladys, finding out about her book, talking about the film that's coming out, and meeting some more of the mothers, and finding out what makes this place so special. Great. That's great, Phil. Trisha? Yes, Bob. First of all, I, I'm not alone here in the medicine camp division. <laughs> Are you taking away my rangers? No. Are I you just, keeping them? Yeah, it's a ranger raid. <laughs> I just wanted to say how absolutely lovely you look. Oh, I thank you. Why are you being so nice today? I appreciate it when you, you spend really a little mean? time on yourself, <laughs> Patricia. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're just so sweet. Yeah. Thank you. What do you really mean? That's what I'm really wondering. Well, what we we Tom, can't, we can't do be think? doing push-ups in between the breaks, though. You know what I mean? Don't Thanks for worry. butting in, Jim. That was starting to sound like a video Hallmark card yeah. in there. <laughs> <laughs> was, uh, I'm amazed at those women not eating sedatives. I can barely get through one of these shows without some. Uh, Bob Keeshan, Captain Kangaroo, is here with his thought for the day. We should have some... Oh, I guess we'll, all right, we'll go with Bob's music. Then we'll have some tuba music. Uh, Bob? Here's one from our day. A great manager has a knack for making ball players think they are better than they think they are. Reggie Jackson. <laughs> it really worked with Reggie, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, he had the candy bar, too. Yeah. Uh, we have the wonderful Tuba Christmas gang here with us, uh, about to grace the show with a bit more uh, Tuba uh, Christmas music. 
And uh, Jim, as they do that, why don't you tell us what else is coming up on Breakfast Time? The ringleader of this year's Circus of the Stars is Michael Kastner and the birthplace of the veggie burger. I like mine medium green on Breakfast Time. It's 26 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Tom. Patricia sitting in for Laurie, Bob the Puppet, and me, Jim. I'm the announcer, and here's Patricia, Bob, and Tom. You having fun? Yeah, so I like far? that he said my name first. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. You're welcome, mm -hmm. Patricia. And here I was. I thought I'd have to take care of you. I have to sort of just watch out. Yeah, you know work, work your way back into the show here, Tom. <laughs> uh, can we... Now, why, Bob, we're not hearing you that well, which in and of itself I'm not complaining about, That's but, right. uh, That's right. but just so you know, so our folks in the booth know. Wow. Spit up the fur bowl first, Bob, That's right. then talk. So those, <laughs> those new beast stung lips he has. Can we take a ledge cam shots of our, our uh, favorite squad uh, car? Clear the monitor in the studio, if you would. Yeah. Uh, there's Officer Tom and Officer Don. And they gave us a present today. They gave us a miniature yep. Officer Tom, Officer Don squad car That's that great. says FX Precinct on the side. <laughs> and that I didn't see yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And it comes from medically sealed, like many of the squad cars in New York. <laughs> FX percent. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, so what do we do now? What do we do now? I don't, I've been on vacation for over a week. I have not a clue. Oh, word well, of the day. That's Jim. right. And you know I'm not going to say, as I was going to, why you conniving weasels, once again, why do you put it on me to do word of the day? Is it because your own vocabulary consists of the 50 or so words you use on the air in two or three, you know? I think we know who needs a sedative on today's show. No, no, I'm not going to do that because that would only be one example of maestro... Today's word of the day, vilify. See, I would be vilifying you uh, by saying that. And, and what that means is really open, deliberate, and forceful defaming or degrading. Okay. Okay, it's like vilifying. maligning or defaming or traducing, you know. But, but this one is really particularly vicious when you vilify somebody. All right. And open and deliberate. Okay. You, you know, well, it's well. not... Okay. So we'll use that. We'll be vilifying before <laughs> the show is out. Now, what we're going to do here is, oh, we have, all right, while you get set to, I think you and Al Rosenberg are going to chat about right, uh, right. His, his weekly Vox Box. While you go do that, I'm going to just chat briefly with uh, our family, family while you get set up. Okay. Patricia filling in for Lori. Oh, wait a minute. You know what we haven't done? Uh, we haven't dropped for 10, which is what we <laughs> did. <laughs> Come on. Oh, you're not going to do it with me? No, no. Oh, this that's is your enough. time. One, right. two, She's three, the instructor. four. Five, six, seven, breathe, eight, a little yeah. slower. <laughs> all right, there we go, all right. Like this that. is already the fittest version of breakfast time ever. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay. Uh, what we asked uh, Esther Guadalupe of Hollywood, Florida to do, and you can finish your breakfast, uh, Esther, but Jennifer, one of our uh, tuba players over there, is that the technical term for someone who plays the tuba? You're a... You're a tubist. <laughs> oh, you're a tubist. Okay. Right. Uh, it, Pablo Picasso was the first tuba player. Is by that the way. right? No, That's he was right. a cubist. Oh, 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 I'm a sorry. A cubist. Right. I got you. Uh, would you mind, Esther, after just doing a little nail work on Jennifer? <laughs> you really don't want to do this, but you're playing along, right? Hey, you right. wandered in here. You know better if, if you watch the show. Is, is uh, Patricia ready with uh, Al Rosenberg? Let's find, let's, right. let's find out together. Why don't we? Oh, there they all are. <laughs> We're here. We're ready to go. We have Al Rosenberg here. And Bob yeah. got lucky big time. That's right. With his favorite ranger. His ranger, yeah. yeah. The rangers are actually here to give me a little moral support. Every time I walk into a room, they go, smile more or uh, relax. You look great. So they're just kind of keeping me. <laughs> well, you do look great and relax more. Oh, thank you very much. But, uh, we, uh, we went to uh, one of the local schools, and I wanted to ask you this. You don't, you don't seem like the kind of person who gets angry very often. Exercise helps. Yeah, exercise helps you not get angry because you're too tired to be angry. I get very angry. What are you talking about? <laughs> we wanted to find out... What makes kids angry? Because sometimes they think they're not allowed to get mad. So what we ask these children is, what makes you really, really angry? That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. What makes you really angry? Uh, books. <laughs> books make you angry? Mm -hmm. How come? Because I don't know how to read. <laughs> People laugh at me. <laughs> When my sister takes something and she throws it outside, because she always does that. She does? When my sister steals my toys. Does that happen a lot? 
Yes. <laughs> what makes you really angry? When I have to be punished. When a hamster bites me. A dog biting me. A dog biting you makes you angry? Did that ever happen to you? Oh, I'm glad. So you've never really been angry? When my brother and sister bother me. When my sister break, breaks my toys. Or when she, uh, when she loses them. My sister's 11, my brother's, he's 20. <laughs> and your brother still bothers you when he's 20? Okay. What makes you really angry? When somebody pushes me down. When people yell. My brother. Well, what does he do? He just bothers me. I wish I can kill him. <laughs> My brother hurt me. But you bother everybody else. Isn't it fair that he bothers you? I don't bother him. He bothers me. Yeah, but you bother other people. Yeah. Oh, but it should stop there. You don't want him to bother you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> So, well, that wasn't too outrageous. I mean, they looked like they had legitimate excuses yeah. for being angry. Yelling and siblings, I think, <laughs> is, it seems to be the whole thing. That last one there was great, because he puts marbles on the floor to get his brother and, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to hurt his brother. <laughs> to make him angry. <laughs> exactly, to get him back. Yeah. They're so cute. They really are. And so are you, man. Oh, I thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. It's nice to have you here, Al. It's good to be here. Thank so you. So now what? We're going to go see what's happening with Tom and the news. Hate to interrupt that mutual admiration yeah. society <laughs> going on. Here are some of the stories we're following for you on this Monday. The FBI is searching for a motive in the weekend mail bomb killing of a New Jersey advertising executive. Officials think the bomb was sent by the same man responsible for more than a dozen explosions in the past 16 years. O.J. Simpson's defense team refuses to comment on a report that says it wants to skip a pretrial hearing on DNA evidence. The hearing, originally scheduled for today, has been postponed with no new date set. Have you been dripping that thing for the whole week I've been gone? I thought so. Uh, there's a chance the pandering conviction of Heidi Fleiss could be thrown out. Five of the jurors have reportedly signed statements claiming they discussed the case before reaching their verdict. Good. <laughs> Fill up those gas tanks. Gas prices could be going up soon. The cost of heating oil is also said to be on the rise. And finally, some 12,000 trekkers got to beam up by telephone to the captains of the Starship Enterprise last night. William Shatner and Patrick Stewart talked with the Star Trek fans in a huge conference call. All the trekkers had to do to participate was plunk down $100 for a special phone card. Whoa. Gee, Scotty, can you say screwed? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Captain, we've run out of suckers. Um, let's, uh, let's go back to Patricia, because believe me, that's all I have. <laughs> Well, actually, we're going to find out. Jim, are there any spiky yellow balls today? Please. Yes, there, yes, there are some spiky okay. yellow balls, as you can see. Okay. But, the, uh, but don't be fooled by this, because these spiky yellow balls, which we can see, are actually frozen spiky yellow balls. We have a lot of snow in this circle here, and we have snow rain on the coast and snow in all these western states, which is good for the ski areas. And I do want to point out that there is just a little bit of rain where Laurie's vacation is. <laughs> Let's look at those jingle high temperatures. Bells, now you see the high temperatures are not that high, but in Hollywood, Florida, it's actually the, the only place where it's pretty nice is in the 70s today, and that's the weather. Hey, what song was Frank singing there? It was a James Brown version of Jingle Bell <laughs> from the Friday show. It's unrecognizable. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Let's, uh, if you're going down the cable network alphabet just before FX, you find E, the entertainment network. And Michael Kastner from E is uh, here with us. How about a hand for Michael? Yeah. Now, now this is a different uh, hairdo than the last time I saw you. It's it's longer. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's it's, it. It's it's, it's the it's East Coast. It's been too. slicked back for it's, a couple of years is now. That right? I finally just let it down. Now I moved to New York. Now you know you're back uh, to New York from the West Coast, and you're doing something for CBS on the, uh, this Friday. The huh? Circus of the Stars. Uh huh. Uh, it's, it's I think the 17th year that it's been on. Right. And uh, I said that I, I would do it, but I didn't want to get dressed in tights. Yeah. It's a real problem. I just don't like to do that. Yeah. Didn't want to shave my underarms because the men have to do that on that show. Yeah. Well, we all do it here. Guys, well, right? 
Yeah. Right before well, showtime. Two time. of the players did, yeah. yeah. And I didn't want to get on the trapeze. But I wound up getting on the trapeze. But other than that, no tights. Oh, all right. Yeah. Now, we're going to see a clip, I believe, from uh, this Friday's edition. It's on CBS this Friday night from 8 to 10 of Circus of the Stars with Michael Kastner and the gang. Let's take a look. Oh. I came up the easy way, up the ladder. But I understand. She must have helped you with a fear of heights. <laughs> You're right. My trainer has taught me that it's not a fear of heights, it's a respect of heights. So what you're feeling right now is respect for That's where you're right. at. <laughs> Could I ask you not to shove me like that again? <laughs> Just a little thing, because I do have a fear. See, this is real sweat in my hands right now. Okay. <laughs> do it. Let's do it. You're going to stay calm, cool, and collected. And they are going to absolutely. Is, make is that the end of the clip? Oh, okay. Yes, no, we're, we're just like. Huh? <laughs> we're, we're, I, I thought yeah. I thought you were going to go sailing off the side. Yes, Bob. Take it. <laughs> There's nothing to take. take yeah. Well, take whatever's there yeah. and do right. something with it. We're guessing you have a respect of interviews now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, Michael, uh, the, you, you were there for the launch of E, were you not? Mm -hmm. I mean, from, from the very start of uh, the network. I was, I was there before they even had a name for it. Uh huh. And well, actually, when I found out what the name was, I thought it was a typo in USA Today. So <laughs> while I was talking with the uh, <laughs> vice president of the network, um, I started going, oh, there's a typo in USA Today. They say that you're going to call it E, like just one letter. That's the dumbest thing, right? She's yeah. like, that's the name of it. And I mean, that's, a, that's a good name. <laughs> yeah. I like that. It works. Now, you've gone behind the scenes. I've watched you when you're working behind the scenes at the Oscars and the Emmys and all that. Mm -hmm. is, that a, is that a tough uh, gig? Because it seems like... The, the stars, a lot of times, are so focused on getting in, getting over their own nerves about waiting to hear if their names are going to be announced. I think the, the best part, the first year it was pretty tough, but uh, most of the celebrities watch E! all the time. Yeah. So I think when they're going down a whole sea of people like, you know, Norwegian television and everything, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, when they see E!, it's like, oh, hi, how's yeah, it going, yeah. you know? And most of them I've interviewed a bunch of times before, so it's kind of like old home week. So are we gonna, we're going to be seeing you all over the place now. Is that, is that some on E and then on CBS and, and CBS doing things and a couple right of other things we'll be doing yeah, as well, yeah. yeah. Uh, you, you are welcome to do, I know you do behind the scenes things a lot. You're very good at it. And well, if, you, if you would like to take one of our cameras and sort of float around here during our show and we'll cut to you periodically. Oh, for, I don't know what your absolutely. schedule is, but I'm, if you I'm have fine. some time. I would love to. Actually, I've been watching. I walked by your building all the time. And oh, kind of, yeah, yeah. I see people like flipping up and, and tubas yeah. and things. Yeah. You never really have any yeah. idea what's going on up here. So well, I would love to. And don't, don't think just because we're inside we know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Just, but feel free to, to bring do that. that part so up. Michael Castor will give a behind the scenes look at uh, what's going on on breakfast time as we continue. Jennifer, antlers and all, will get her nails done by one member of our visiting family, the Guadalupe's from Hollywood, Florida. And Patricia, what, what else do we have? I don't know. I think we should ask Jim. Jim, We're, we're going to have the Poet Laureate of Breakfast Time. And Tom's on the move again and getting that therapy he's been looking for for a long time. It's all coming up on Breakfast Time. Suzanne? Hi, Suzanne. Hey, Patricia. Hey, we're talking about some veggie burgers, huh? Yeah, they're garden burgers. Have you eaten one? No, have you? Yeah. Okay, did you eat hi, one Suzanne. yet? Hi, Suzanne. Right oh, we're going to make one right now. I'm going to get to taste it. Spencer oh, says good. hi. You Who does? Spencer. Oh, hi, Spencer. I don't, I don't know. It's 19 minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time. With Patricia sitting in for Laurie, Tom, Bob the Puppet, and me, Jim. I'm the announcer, and here's Patricia, Bob, Tom. And guest. <laughs> Thank you. That, that, I can see why you're the announcer. That's now. right. I've it's got this down. It's the warmth down. that's a spontaneity. No, and, and, and he is a professional announcer. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, I, I just want to mention, I think uh, one, of the, one of our road warriors who deserves a round of applause, I have yet to see the, the tape of the show because I was out Friday, but for uh, surviving the James Brown <laughs> version James of James Brown. 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 Yeah. 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 That was, it was great. It was really too bad you missed it. You I had know. to see it. I know. How many times do you do a remote, Spencer, where the police are cordoning off the outside? <laughs> <laughs> not often. Not often. No kidding. Yeah. All right, right. As soon as you're done with that segment, yeah. come out yeah. with your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> they had songs and subpoenas <laughs> flying like crazy. It's a little uh, mailbag music. Uh, Maestro would be wonderful right now. Oh, yes. Wait a minute, Mr. Look out! No 
about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have a very special mail back oh, today did, because yeah. instead of just reading a letter, instead of uh, just, uh, which we love to get, by the way, faxes and such, we have with us Ellen McDonald, who is here from Long Island. Is that right? That's right. And uh, you can applaud for Ellen. Yeah. That's a good day. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's just that you got here from Long Island. That's right. I know, a 21 it. tuba salute. That's right. It's hard to applaud with a tuba in your lap. I understand, <laughs> so don't feel obliged. Now you have you're a regular viewer of the show, are you? Yes, I am. Uh huh. And you have you have put your affections for the show into verse. Did I they tell you they were affections? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. I made observations. <laughs> and put them down oh. oh, they're observations. Yeah. Okay. And ladies and gentlemen, the the uh, observations of Ellen McDonald from Long Island. Laurie and Tom teased at the top of the show. The sit-ups are over. Now it's three, two, one, go. Quick, get the Prozac. Susanna's up next. We've seen Phil at the baths. Who would ever have guessed? <laughs> J.D. is the cool one. He's all savoir-faire. He can basically follow what goes on in there. <laughs> Your puppet guy, Bob, who looked great in that tutu, was hardly upstaged by Kirk minus Sulu. <laughs> if McLean didn't get it, it wasn't your fault. Tom tried, so did Bob, but you're on and he's off. <laughs> Don't mess with Gwen when she's covering an issue. You better watch out or she'll sneak up and kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> you're fun and refreshing. I love your remotes. Your magic, you're special. Don't let Jim clear his throat. Yeah. 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 Very nice. Can I, can I just see? Yes, we give you a t-shirt. I know you cut some out. That's what I'm looking at. Uh, you have rangers and spandex. That's just what we need. Wait, let Steve build a whale. All he needs is a field. <laughs> see, need and feel don't <laughs> run. That's, why, they, yeah, that's why I cut that out. But you get, where's the shirt? Oh, here it is. You get the new cheap FX T-shirt <laughs> to call your wow. very own. That's right. And just your size. Good night, shirt. That's very nice. Next year, the new shirts, I think, as Jim mentioned, will have this one logo taken off completely. Right. So that annoying you know. logo which washes Thank right you. out. That's right. Ellen, a pleasure yeah, to have you. Thanks. Yes. yes. How do people fax, write, and uh, ask us in verse? Write to us at Breakfast Side P.O. Box 824 Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 1015-0824, or call us at 212-802-4054, or fax us at 212-802-4208. Right now, I believe we join our behind-the-scenes uh, reporter from E and CBS, Michael Kastner, somewhere in the FX department. This is really cool because for four years I've been on a network with one letter and now I'm up to two. <laughs> <laughs> and Friday, all the way to three. This is really cool because we, uh, we have really boring bathrooms at E. Um, and, and I guess you guys, this is an actual studio and you've done interviews and I've been uh, being filled in on all the celebrities who've been in here. Now I understand that, who was in the bathtub, did you say? Uh, who who there was some, in the bathtub? There was a... Uh, this guy from what was John it? John Henton? Yeah, he was in the bathtub. From I heard about Single. that already. Yep. And then uh, yeah. some guy from Erasure was in here taking a shower. Patrick Duffy. That's right. Pat and Pat, yeah, <laughs> Patrick Duffy was in the shower. The guy from Erasure. Yeah. I don't know if I would have done that part. That would have been something to look at. And I understand Malcolm McDowell actually used this toilet. Yes. Yeah. And which Film yeah. at 11. He forgot to flush. I didn't want to bring that up. Right, so I'm just going to continue sort of yeah. taking a tour. Yeah, and by the way, you guys that, have great that's coffee. That's about enough of that. Thank you, very, thank you very much. One of the things I'm going to do right now, Patricia, because you have often said that I could use a little... Exercise? No, therapy. <laughs> uh, and I'm going out to what is a mobile therapy van where harried executives can, on their way to work, on their way to the board meetings, on their way to find out that they've been downsized, can, uh, can have therapy in this, in this moving... So they come shrink. to you? No, no, no. I'm going to the shrink right now. That's great. If things don't work out, they can drop you off at the home. That's exactly right. So I'm going to make head sure out you there. check in before you come back to make sure we want you back. Even we might need to. Fine. Fine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'll have things to talk great. about with the therapist now. Leave me alone with her. I'll have to do push ups. Yeah. Which personality is coming back? Everybody can guess. <laughs> okay, over here. Over the here. show's mine. Over it's here. mine. <laughs> Still with the Rangers and the support. It's great. They give me a little feedback every once in a while. But now we're going to go see Suzanne in Portland, Oregon. Suzanne, do you have garden burgers for us? 
Yes, I do. You know, if Tom ate a little healthier, he might not need therapy. <laughs> sound body, sound ooh, mind, you know. Ooh. This segment is perfect for you and Spencer, Patricia. I'm here at the home of Paul Wenner, who's the founder of Wholesome and Hardy Foods Company and the creator of the Garden Burger. He turned his own private recipe for a Garden Burger into a multi-million dollar industry, which was rated the number one stock last year. Now, this is Paul Wenner. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Suzanne. So tell me, what makes the Garden Burger different from other meatless burgers? Well, it's uh, not soy-based, made out of mushrooms and onions and oats and brown rice and low-fat cheeses and egg whites and bulgur wheat. Okay, and I understand also there's no soybeans in this, there's no tofu. It's not trying to taste like meat. No, no, we're just trying to taste like something that's wonderful and great texture and great taste. And how about the calorie and the fat content? 140 calories for a quarter pounder. And you can see here it's one-sixth the fat of a hamburger. And so this is 15 grams of fat in a regular burger, Patricia, which I ate yesterday. So this is swimming around my arteries right now. Right. And this is two and a half grams of fat for these garden burgers. There's also a fat-free garden burger called Garden Veggie, correct? That's correct. Garden Veggie and Garden Vegan are both fat-free. Now, the reason that this is also great, Patricia, is if you have kids and you want them to eat healthy and you want it to taste good, this is supposedly tastes good, so I'm going to taste it right now, made ex exclusively out of vegetables. Tell the truth, Suzanne. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank goodness. Now that says Thank all. goodness. It is good. <laughs> Does it taste <laughs> like a burger? Does it actually yeah. taste like a burger? Is it supposed to taste like a burger? It doesn't. It's not supposed to taste like a burger. It's not supposed to taste like meat, but it does taste good. Also, you can pop these in the toaster, so it's really easy for your kids. If they're at home, they can pop them in the toaster and they can eat them. Now, Paul also used to be a chef and used to own a restaurant. Come with me, Paul. And he has some ideas. He's health conscious in all aspects of his life, not just on the business end, in his home, too. So show me what you can do at home to get your day started healthy if I, you know, I'm not used to eating healthy for breakfast. Well, I recommend starting with a fruit smoothie. Uh, that way you get your five fresh fruits uh, every morning. What fruits are these? Well, this is papaya, strawberries, uh, pineapple, and bananas, and in orange juice. And then we put some uh, almond milk in there. This is a uh, milk made out of almonds that we actually ma manufacture and sell. So that's non-dairy. Non-dairy and uh, very low fat. And, and once you get all this fruit in here, just blend it up with some ice. And, uh, we have and voila, it's already blended. <laughs> Magic. Look, it comes out of the That's good. Okay. It is good. Um, yeah, I, I, I do like it, <laughs> actually. I must admit. Yeah, we'll find out <laughs> when she gets back, Patricia. <laughs> the texture's a little, a little much for me, but, but it tastes good. Now, what are some ideas for breakfast cereals that you can make at home that are good for you? Well, this is real quick and easy. You just take five grain cereal. Now, I just put fresh apples in boiling water and uh, some dried fruits like cranberries and uh, raisins and currants, that sort of thing. This time of year, it's real pretty. And then some hazelnuts and sunflower seeds in there. I have to tell you about hazelnuts, Patricia. Portland must be the hazelnut capital of the world because on every menu in every restaurant, everything you order can be with hazelnuts. Okay, what did you just put They're in? Also the that was the, the five nice. grains and the flaxseed. <laughs> And what you do is you bring that to a boil and just cover it and turn it off, let it sit for 15 minutes, and it's done. You don't want to cook it too much. You have great texture and taste that way. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to see what this actually looks like when it's all done. This is what the breakfast cereal looks like. What else have we got here? Well, we have uh, uh, a garden sausage made with grilled red potatoes and vegetables. And uh, over here we have 10 grain uh, waffles with garden sausage, fresh raspberries, and of course the cereal that we just talked about. Is that the garden sausage? Is the garden fiber, sausage very veggies? Very healthy and very yeah, tasty. Always. That's most important, they taste good. Yeah. They taste good. What was that, Jim? Is the garden sausage all vegetables too? Is that yes, the garden sausage is all vegetables too, correct? That's correct. Mushrooms, onion, oats, brown rice, and low-fat cheeses. It has a little spicier version. It has peppers and, uh, you know, the sausage-type spices. Uh -huh. It's very good. Stands so, so alone, wonderful product. Suzanne. So just so you know, you can get these garden burgers at uh, Hard Rock Cafe, TGI Fridays, Planet Hollywood, and lots of grocery stores around the country. So we're going to have, like, garden burger fast Fast food joints popping up all over the place now? Will there be Garden Burger fast food joints popping up? You never know. You never know. <laughs> so there's some ideas idea. for healthy things that you can do at home that your kids will even like because they taste good. And when we come back, we're going to find out how he turned an old church into an Art Deco palace. Great. Wow. But well, we're going to taste some of those veggie burgers here as soon as they're all cooked up and ready to but go. But you know, that, 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 that breakfast thing looked like the slop that you eat in the morning, Patricia. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. It's good for you. You know? Yeah. Well, how about a little tuba plane for break, huh, guys? Yeah. Now let's confront your darkest fears and make a left at the next light. The latest in mobile therapy. And we've got traditional midwifery, both on breakfast time.
Do we see? We Hi, Patricia. Today. How do you feel? Do you feel any better yet? Do I? No, I haven't had any therapy right, <laughs> right yet. Can we hear him? Yeah. Where? Can you hear me? Can you see us? Where is that him there? No. No. He's in He's a way up there. regular van. Well, you got to be out there further than one of any. You can sit on this side. Yeah. Next to the. Uh... We're right after the break. Right It's five minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Patricia sitting in for Tom. Sitting in for Lori, I mean. And we have Tom, Bob the Puppet, and me, Jim. I'm the announcer. And here's Patricia now. Sitting in for whoever she wants. It and might Bob. be for Tom. We, he's out, actually, on Fifth Avenue getting a little therapy, a little mobile therapy. So we may not little. have him back. Yeah. He needs more than a more little. More than a little, yeah. So, Tom, can you hear us? I can. New you York, can. New York, an incredible town. Your blood pressure's <laughs> up. Your life expectancy's down. <laughs> New York. Where's that I wish van? I could throw a hat in the air. Here on Fifth <laughs> Avenue by the Empire State Building, you know, any workday, no matter where you are across the country, is stress-filled enough. But here in this uh, lovely land we call the Big Apple, uh, it can be incredibly stressful, particularly if you're a high-priced executive. And that's why a couple of uh, therapists have gotten together and have created the mobile therapy van. Do you want me to go in first? I'll come right in here to introduce you Cyclo to doctors Ursula Strauss and Shelley Lennox. Doctors, welcome. Dr. Strauss, Dr. Lennox, a pleasure. Good to have you here. And for only $175 an hour, a harried executive can come in here and ride to work with one or both of you uh, giving therapy. One. Just one? Or one of the six are, who are on our staff, including the two of us. Now, I understand you have about... Who is behind you here? There's some... What, what are you doing down here? Nothing. Oh, okay. It's a mechanic. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he's very shy, Tom. Yeah. Be careful yeah, no, with him. Uh, he's a guy with agoraphobia. <laughs> you, that's right. You have uh, about 50 clients across uh, Manhattan who utilize your sort of traveling therapy uh, technique. Right. It's not only in Manhattan. It's uh, the greater metropolitan area. So we handle people uh, in Long Island, uh, any one of the five boroughs, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, within community distance from Manhattan. Now, were, were I one of these clients, what might we be talking about right now in our trip uh, to my office? Probably the schedule for the day and the kinds of stress levels that the executive might be feeling as a result of having to be everywhere, all the time, yeah. anytime. Uh -huh. And uh, do you notice that these people, are they primarily men or men and women? What's, what's the breakdown? Well, actually, right now we're primarily uh, treating men. Um, I don't know that it's only men who would use our service. It's just that we um, have been uh, directing our services right now at the beginning to the Wall Street um, area in which there are primarily men. Now, I understand that if uh, it's 175 an hour, but if you get caught in traffic, that therapy is free. That's correct. That's the perk to our clientele, that if we get stuck in traffic due to no fault of theirs, we, uh, we don't charge any extra fee. But if we were to be going on a long trip and we knew in advance that it would take more than an hour and 15, then we would have fixed another $50 to the basic fee. Now we've got Dave the driver over here. Excuse me, I'm trying to come through here. Oh, sorry, pardon me. Excuse me, pardon my back. Yeah. Hi, Dave? You've probably heard a lot of stuff, huh? Can't yep, I sure did. Uh, a lot of the top executives in New York who aren't quite as confident and self-assured as people might think, right? Sure. When's the book coming out, Dave? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> you might think about sure. that, Dave. You, you don't have to be driving this therapy van, Dave. There's a great bestseller career. You could be doing all the talk shows, Dave. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> we'll talk after, OK? OK. I'm Might Dave's as well, agent. you're not talking now. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you very much. Now, uh, you, whoa, hello. <laughs> well, getting to know you. They accelerated, and I'm all of a sudden in the shrink's lap here. Uh, so, so are you going to That's be... That's 275 uh, an hour. <laughs> and I'm hooked. Anthony, I'm hooked up. Uh, 
Now, are you going to be going off and doing sessions right after we chat? No, we have several interviews today. And yeah. later on this evening, we have some interviews planned for the two of us. Some, right. not interviews, but some sessions planned. All right. In the meantime, we're just going to go out drinking. Uh, hey, do more, do how more? much does it cost? Yeah. How what? How much does it cost? What, were you not what, listening? Once? It's 175 an hour. Yeah, oh, that's cheaper than a ride to the airport. Use yeah, them. That's, that's right, and safer. <laughs> Doctors Ursula Strauss and Dr. Shelley Lennox here with us, the mobile therapy van taking us back to uh, the FX department. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. But only if you really want to say yeah. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think they should take you around the block one more time, Tom. A I few more minutes, please. I bribed them, Patricia. They're not coming back. I know. Well, we're going to break now, so what's coming up, Jim? The news, the weather, and... Can I believe my eyes? A Mitsubishi Mirage. Coming up on Breakfast Time. I'd like to propose a toast. Not, not a toaster, a toast. All right, all right, let's go with it. Here's to the mighty toaster. With it, you can warm up bread or turn it on its side instead and use it as a coaster. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Tom Berger on Lori Hibbert and Bob the Puppet. Sitting in for Lori today is Patricia Moreno. My name's Jim, and I'm the announcer. To say good morning, here's Tom. Thank you, Jim. Uh, just back from the mobile therapy van, $175 an hour. You'd have to have your head examined. Just <laughs> but, you know, uh, good to have you with us on this Monday into our second hour of breakfast time. Patricia Moreno, Patricia, you're doing a fine job filling in for Lori. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. It's kind of easier when you're not here, actually. <laughs> uh -huh. Get that, get that <laughs> attitude down, uh -huh. don't you? Yeah. Gwen's water. What's say, Bob? Gwen Potter. Uh, no kidding. What do we have uh, in this next hour, Patricia? God Street Wine is here. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. And we have Cassandra coming up. I'm going to talk to her. Okay. And I think you're going to introduce Sheena. Sheena? And, and no, you... Sheena Hankins coming up, but aren't you going to introduce the remotes? No, I don't want to. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. I'm well, then do 10 push ups. Yeah. And... All, right. All right, excuse me. And, and 10 uh, more minutes in the mobile van. Yeah. <laughs> well, exactly. I can't afford that kind of therapy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, we've got some great road warriors across the country, including Phil Kogan in Flowers View, Florida, with midwife Gladys Milton, who has brought over 3,000 babies into the world. Uh, Phil? That's right, uh, wow. Tom, a very, a very <laughs> special woman, and this is uh, Gladys's. Hall of Fame, and Gladys, pretty simple to get on this Hall of Fame you got here, right? That's right. Be born my baby. <laughs> there you go. You got that? This is just some of them, and Tom, when we come back, we're going to be talking more with uh, Gladys. We're going to meet, be uh, meeting some of the babies who have been uh, born here, some of the parents who come to this place, and find out why parents should maybe choose going to a midwife. What's so special about having a midwife as opposed to going to uh, a hospital? All right. Thank you, you know, Phil. Ta oh, Tom? Yes, Bob? You know, you learn a lot. I thought a midwife was the second of three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see where you would. Uh, Suzanne Wong joins us in Portland, Oregon, at the home of the Garden Burger. Suzanne? Yes, I'm at the home of the Garden Burger man. His name is Paul Wenner. He's the founder of Wholesome and Hearty Foods, and he invented the Garden Burger. He's a multimillionaire. He created this incredible industry here. He's one of Oregon's finest. And he also is ecologically friendly in all aspects of his life. He bought this little rinky-dink house for $18,000 and turned it into an art deco palace here, Tom, with only recycled and secondhand things that he found at garage sales and estate sales. So when we come back, we're going to go in here, find out what he's done, and also give you tips for what you can do at home to spice up your decor for very little money. Thanks, Suzanne. Uh, Michael Kastner from E, the Entertainment Network here doing a behind-the-scenes commentary. How's the show going so far from your uh, learned perspective? It was really exciting. I was upstairs. You have a pinball looks good, machine looks good. Here which was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I was doing yeah. that because we only have Twister at E and Greg Kinnear always <laughs> cheats. So that, that's a lot more fun. But the one thing I, I was kind of curious about, there doesn't seem to be any heat in your building. No, there isn't any heat Everybody's today. It's like yeah. down here. Yeah. How are the tuba players doing without any heat? How many lips have actually stuck to the tubas at this point? <laughs> oh, they're doing. Oh, they're good. Don't stir them up. They're mercifully quiet. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'll also be going outside once again, where it's actually warmer than in the building today, <laughs> to talk with Bob Cirillo as we take a look this week at the Mitsubishi Mirage Coupe, a new 1995 model that Bob will review. But right now, Patricia has a look at some of this Monday's top stories. Thanks, Tom. 
Investigators say there's a link between a deadly bombing, mail bombing, and more than a dozen explosions over the past 16 years. The latest victim, a New Jersey ad executive. Tax cut talk is in the air in Washington today. And President Clinton is working on his fiscal 1996 budget and says he'll cut taxes for the middle class if the government can afford it. The FDA has approved a semi-synthetic version of the cancer-fighting drug Taxol. This will help save... Wrong one. This will help save the endangered, endangered Pacific yew tree, which has been used for taxol for years. A man who was lost in California wilderness of Big Sur for eight days was found over the weekend. David Holt said he survived by hiding in a hollow tree and drinking water from a nearby stream. Doctors say Holt's hospitalized in serious condition today and might have to have part of his left foot amputated. And Disclosure, starting, starring Demi Moore and Michael Douglas, was the biggest box office draw this weekend. I saw it. It was actually great. Was it I good? Loved, yeah, I loved it. All right. All right. All right. Now, uh, well, I'm, I'm just getting set up with little Michael here. Michael, you're four years old, right? Yeah. And uh, you're here with, uh, with the members of the Guadalupe family. Is this your, your Aunt Esther? Yeah. And, and Uncle Elias, is that right? Yeah. No, they... Say cousin. They're cousins? Yes. Yeah. Are they your grandparents? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay, good. They're yeah. anything you... They're, just, they're, they're, they're the completely malleable relatives. They have can you be ever anything. seen these people before in your life, That's Michael. right, that's right. Now, Michael, <laughs> what we're going to have you do is actually switch the show in a minute. You can press all the buttons that are bringing the pictures of breakfast time to all the people watching. How about that? Isn't that exciting? It's like the Gary Cooper of short kids here. He's like, yep, yep, that's whatever. Right now, let's uh, let's check with Jim. Is that okay for the weather? Yes. Okay. You related to Jim? But Jim. Jim, wake Jim. up. All right, listen, we got snow in Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin, and Michigan. We got spiky yellow balls up and down the East Coast. But don't be fooled, folks. It's cold. We also have rain along the California, Oregon, and uh, Washington coast, and snow uh, from uh, Utah and Nevada north in the mountains. Let's look at those high temperatures. None too high. Why are we calling them high temperatures? Let's look at them low temperatures. It's cold. There's also rain in Hollywood, Florida, just for the Guadalupe. And that's the weather. All right. Well, actually, no, no, we have Henri and Luigi. All right. Yeah, and as you know, as you can see, if Luigi in Idaho were to jump over uh, Henri and into the Dakotas, <laughs> we'd have to king him. And that's the weather. <laughs> All right, Jim. Michael's already started pushing buttons. <laughs> now, the thing is, Michael, behind one of the buttons is, is a nifty uh, FX uh, prize. I think there are a couple. Oh. But no, don't tell him which row to punch. You can punch. It, it's more exciting if you just, any button you want, Michael, just start hitting buttons, and we'll see what happens on, on our show. Go ahead. Just press, start pressing buttons. Go, Michael. Press the button. Ow! 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 This try this line here. This line here might be more uh, disruptive. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Keep going. Keep okay. Yeah! Yay! Yay! Got a T-shirt. Keep pressing. Yay! 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 Nice job switching. That's Michael, right. good job. The, Thank you very much. The totals were T-shirts, therapy sessions, and yellow spiky balls from the West Coast. Now, did you, Michael, was that exciting? Yeah. 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 It was. Jim, if that's, that's not exciting enough for American uh, television yeah. viewers at this hour of the morning, okay. what else is happening? Road testing the Mitsubishi Mirage. Coming up on breakfast time. Eight. It's 14 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to breakfast time with Tom Patricia sitting in for Lori, Bob the puppet and me, Jim. I'm the announcer. And here's Patricia and Bob and Spandex Rangers. That's right. And, and one tubist. A famous tubist, you didn't That's know. Right. That's Look right. at this. Pablo Picasso. He was in the paper. This is Ben, but we want to make sure it's him, so he's going to give us the pose. <laughs> looks like him. What do you think? <laughs> That's yeah, it. Yeah, it looks like him. That's it. We could all it's do that. It's either Henry's dizzy. 
Laura. It's not Laura. <laughs> I think it's Ben. Can we have your autograph, Ben? Sure. You sign that for us. Yeah, that wow. Ooh. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. What an honor. But let's go see what Phil's doing. He's in Florida with Gladys Milton, the midwife. So where are you, Phil? Well, right now I'm looking at uh, Gladys uh, Milton's Hall of Fame. These are some of the uh, children that were born. Amazing photographs, and you know, an amazing woman. I want to, to uh, reintroduce you to here. Right now, we're with some of the families that she's helped, some of the children that she's helped bring into the world. So this is uh, Gladys Milton over here. And uh, like I said, 3,000 children she's helped to bring into the world, which is larger than the community that we have here of about 200. And uh, this is uh, Karen Johnson over here. And Karen Johnson has had four of her five children here. Karen, what's special ab about this place and, uh, and Gladys? Well, I feel like it's just a nice warm feeling, like a warm and fuzzy. I've had one child at a hospital, and that was kind of cold and unfeeling. But it, here, it's just warm and friendly, and feels like family. Now, uh, Patricia, I want to go over here and ask Gladys what it was like for Mrs. Johnson, because, you know, you hear, you hear stories about childbirth being very difficult, but for Mrs. Johnson, it was very simple. Right, Gladys? She defies the odds. <laughs> She's never known that she was... Uh, in labor until 30 minutes before the baby was wow. born. So she had one 30, one 18 minutes, one 9 minutes, I mean after she arrived at the clinic. Right. And the last one was about somewhere between 25 and 30. Can we find Patricia, out what she eats for breakfast? Amazing. She's That's a big amazing. She, she comes longer. in all made up and looking pretty, doesn't even damage her makeup. <laughs> doesn't even get a sweat up, huh? Mm -mm. Nine minutes into it, Patricia. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This is amazing. We also have uh, Jerry and Jessica, who we met before in the last hour, who are expecting very shortly. This is uh, Gladys, uh, Gladys's daughter, uh, Maria, who is, is going to be taking over the torch. And over here we have a baby who is... Now, how old is this little uh, Jenna Lee over here? She's six days old. And could you oh, tell me so. yourself what's special about coming here? Wow, look, she's opened up her eyes for us, Patricia. <laughs> uh, it's just a very home-like atmosphere, which is what I like. It makes you more relaxed and you know, better able to have the baby, in my opinion. What about as a, as a partner or husband? Uh, what's it like, you know, to be involved in this process? <laughs> You're very involved. <laughs> Cutting the cord was the hardest part. You did that? Yeah. <laughs> so why do you think people would choose to come to a midwife? Because, well, sorry, to go to a hospital as opposed to come to something like this, which is so special. I, I really don't know. Maybe because they're more comfortable with the doctors and all the technology they have there. Um, I was more comfortable here, but other people, you know, they may be afraid there may be something wrong with the baby or something happening during delivery, that they feel more comfortable there. Okay, I just want to ask you, Gladys, you know, this is, this is a wonderful place. It has a lovely energy. The people here are obviously uh, very appreciative of everything you've done, but it hasn't always been easy for you, has it, uh, Gladys? No, no, not really, but uh, I look forward to this day. I'll forget those things behind and still go on and try to do a good job. Push forward and bring more children into the world, 70 years old, 3,000 so far, still counting, Patricia. And I tell you what, if, if people can give birth in nine minutes like Mrs. Johnson, we're going yeah. <laughs> to have a huge, a huge count by the hey, year 2000. Hey, Phil, how far away did those folks come from to go to the birthing center? How, how far away did, have people come uh, to, to give birth here? Well, the state has a limit on how far they can come, you know, because they want to make sure that everything is all right and we're able to make it on time. But Right now, we're dealing with about uh, four, four counties, wow. or maybe even more, like Walton, Okaloosa, and Covington. So how, how many miles away? What would be the greatest distance that a mother would travel to come here? Well, say, like some parts of Pensacola. So it's about an hour away or so, Jim. All right, yeah. great. Well, Phil, if she could assure me I'd have a nine-minute baby, I'd travel all the way from here. I know. Everyone would be doing it, right? I think so. Okay, I promise you. Let's get started. Come on. You be quiet. Okay. We have Spencer here taking a little bit uh, of a little extra therapy from our mobile therapy. Taking advantage of that, huh? You need a little more time, huh? We'll leave you alone. We'll leave you alone to your own therapy. And now we're going to go see Tom. Where are you? Well, I'm right out here with Ike, uh, the bus uh, dispatcher manager whom we <laughs> see regularly on the show. Ike, come over here with me uh -huh. if you would. You having a good morning? Yeah, definitely. You must love it this time of year, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> we got about 12 degrees out here. This 
van right here, driven by Dave in there, uh -huh. is a mobile therapy van. The, the mobile therapists are up with Spencer Garbett right now, double teaming him. <laughs> but for only $175 an hour, on your ride to the corner here, where you stand out here and freeze and get New Yorkers on buses, you can have all of your psychological problems taken care of. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Do you have any psychological problems you'd care to share with America? Not really. <laughs> okay. Well, here's the van. Everything's if, fine. Everything's fine. All right. Good. Okay. Yeah, sure we're, it is. We, we've got the van here. If anybody, anybody wants... Uh, ladies, hi. How are you? We have the mobile therapy van here for $175 an hour. Any psychological problems you have can be taken care of. Would you care to uh, partake? No, that's okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. That, very was good. That, uh, that was Fergie. That was Fergie. Yeah, that was. Yeah, was. Yeah. That was. That was Sarah Ferguson. I just thought. Yeah. That's right. Oh man. No, they have no psychological problems <laughs> in Buckingham Palace. <laughs> Bob Cirillo's here, our FX car guy. Where every week we come outside. Maybe during the dead of winter, we can drive one of these suckers into the apartment, Bob. Tom, I have all kinds of problems. You didn't ask me. <laughs> yeah, we know. Uh, it's only two hours. We don't have show. that kind of time. That's right, Bob. We don't. Uh, now, this is the Mitsubishi Mirage Coupe, the 1995 Mitsubishi Mirage Coupe. What is, uh, what is unique about this car, Bob? Well, Tom, the reason we picked this one is that this is an entry-level Mitsubishi Mirage. In other words, what this car is really just a step above their lowest model. The point being that you can get a really nice car and do a really good job of, of getting all the things you really want for a pretty low amount of money. This is basically 12500 If you want to have air conditioning and some of the fanciest stuff, you can add another $1,000. But you can actually get the S model of this car with all the goodies, with the airbags, for less than $10,000 with whatever you want. So why don't we jump inside? All right, now I understand Suzanne is going to be at a house that's very eco uh, ecologically sound. I understand this car was sort of designed ecologically as well. Is that right? Well, from what I understand, I'm not really sure what that means. <laughs> but it does have all the good things. For example, for that low price, you have both passenger side and driver side airbags. You have, of course, stick shift. That's where you really save some money on the stick shift. It has an awful lot of good things going for it. This particular one, even for 13,800, has a CD player. Kind of a, a, a chintzy mirror. Marilyn would never approve of this one. That's your wife who is very, very uh, demanding about things like that. The, the term I read was environmental engineering. It, yeah, they, they talk in terms of being able to recycle most of the car put the plastic back with coating on the back of the plastic. A lot of manufacturers are getting into that. Or in New York, you can sell it for parts. Well, if you can keep it long enough. Right, right. <laughs> they almost took it on us this morning. <laughs> One of the nice things about this car, in a, in a low price car, if you look quickly in the rear, you can see that you can, you can put that back seat down to put, uh, back you can put both sides down, but if you want to put skis, you can still have a passenger inside. I think that's so so not, a, not a great family car, but, but a wonderful car. I mean, if you're commuting uh, to work and it's just you and maybe somebody else. Sure, and again, entry level. If you want to get started for actually less than $10,000, you can get a sporty car with airbags, plenty of safety, and a, and a good riding car. It's a really a nice car. On the Cirillo rating of 1 to 10? I gave it an 8 because it's, uh, it is really a nice car, but it's not up to the standard of uh, some of the you know more luxurious cars, but it's certainly worth an eight. All right, Bob Cirillo, our yeah. FX car guy, every week. Yes, Jim. Yeah, I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. You're just saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that, it. That James Brown uh, influence uh, from Friday. Uh, under ten grand. That's that, that was the magic word for me. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're gonna come back. Sheena Hankins gonna help us get through holiday stress. And what else is coming up, Jim? Well, we're going to have the guy who peddles the Garden Burgers. He lives in a recycled house. Check it out on breakfast time. Low is on 12. On the piano is John. He's on 14. On the bass is Dan. He's on 2. And the guy sitting in the back there, that's Tomo. He's on top. 1. He's playing there. You want to play a little? And uh, they're going to play right now for you a little bit. 1, 2, 3, and... Smiling so mysteriously, your eyes so shiny and your lips so pretty, you know the stoon playing in my head. Hey Cordelia, 
don't you frown Though your daddy went crazy and your house went down I'm gonna make everything all right I'm singing just for you tonight Day after day, and I want you, darling, and I don't want nobody but you. We could jam in the daylight, we could jam the whole night through. It's 26 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Tom, Patricia sitting here for Lori, Bob the Puppet, and me, Jim. I'm the announcer, and here's Patricia and Tom. <laughs> Eight, and Bob. nine, Over here. ten, <laughs> eleven. That's enough. That's, That's enough. enough. Well, you have about 500 more to go. Is Lori coming back tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> we have here, it's a musical festival here. We have uh, God Street Wine yeah. with us over yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. And we have the Tuber Christmas Orchestra yeah. over here. Can we, have you worked on Oh Come All Ye Faithful together? Is that right? <laughs> it's the Battle of the Bands. Well, well, angels, <laughs> angels we have heard on high, God Street <laughs> Wine, and the tubas all at once. Can you, can you do this? We've played on the road together for the past years. That's all right. All right, let's uh, strike, strike up the bands. Let's hear a little bit of this. <laughs> Just reading the paper right now over there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That, that's good. Yeah. Very, very good. I, yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah. That was that was yeah. very good. Two of them. It was a religious experience. Yeah. <laughs> I felt something. I felt something. <laughs> I felt something in here. Patricia. Yes. It is now all yours. I'll get out of the way. I'll do Thank crunches you. over here. That's a good idea. 500. Thank you. <laughs> well, we're going to go see Suzanne. Suzanne's in Portland, Oregon with Paul Winner. Right? We're talking, yeah. we're going to see some, we tasted the veggie burgers, Suzanne. I really liked it. Yeah. Me too, especially the garden sausage. They spice it so it tastes like meat, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, kind of, kind yeah. Of. It was yeah. good. It didn't kind really taste like, like meat, but it was good. Still, kind of. <laughs> Yes, I'm here at his home. He's actually a multi-millionaire, and yet he chose to buy this $18,000 little rundown home and turn it into an Art Deco palace. I he's did the opposite with my house. In all aspects of his life, and he's taken recycled and secondhand things and turned his home into an extravagant place. He's also the best dressed guy around. Good morning, Paul. <laughs> Suzanne, good morning. Now look at what he's done here. First of all, take a look around at how he's decorated this whole place with Christmas things. And an interesting thing he's done is that he's taken these uh, these stairs down here, and he's used used Christmas lights behind some plastic to create a dramatic effect for the stairs, right? You bet. You can put that under even furniture. It's like the sands well, in you know? Vegas. So. Mm -hmm. Now also, tell, tell me, I'm curious as to why a multi-millionaire would want to live in an $18,000 home and fix it up. Well, I love the place. This is my, uh, this is my project. I'm an artist, you know, so. He's an artist, Patricia. Yeah. Now, how did you uh, come up with these count? Well, uh, use restaurant supply uh, materials. You can get these counters for really cheap. Under $20, uh, just look around. You know, keep your eye out. There's always bargains. There's gems everywhere. And how about these cabinets? These cabinets, they're two-by-fours and sheetrock, and uh, I even took a sponge and just sponge painted them, um, and they look great. Now, just so that you know, you can make it look much more classy by taking all different cabinets, but making the knobs uniform and painting them the same color. Now, you notice how he's cut the formica here, Patricia? He took yeah. the extra piece that used to be here, the triangular piece that used to be here, and he's put it over there against the wall to make shelves so he doesn't waste anything. Very ecologically friendly. You bet. Okay? Now, I want to show you over here, too. Um, this is an old window that he got at a garage sale. What did you do to this? I just built a frame for it and cut a hole in the wall and installed it. There it is. It's a piece of art. Great. And also, look at these blocks of glass, Patricia. He found these as well. You can get them for how much? 25 cents? Oh, I found them in a garage sale, 25, 50 cents. Chipped off the concrete and uh, built the wall. So you can do that for very little money, too. 
Now, another thing that I think is really interesting because I'm such a movie buff is check out this poster right here of the Rocketeer that's cut out and stuck on the wall. <laughs> you can just ask movie theaters when a, a movie run is over if you can have that stuff, and a lot of times they'll just give it to you. So and that costs actually no money. Game. Now, tell us what you did with this floor here. This is reg regular basement concrete. Uh, I just take and painted it white and then black, and then I take newspaper and chopsticks and uh, an eraser and create marble. So you can just take regular cement, Patricia, paint it white, paint black over it, and create the designs to make it look like marble. Now, I'm sorry, Bob, are you catching up with me here? This is also a bathtub that he found in the weeds and refinished to create a dramatic look here for his bathroom. Yeah. Now tell us about this file cabinet here. How did you convert this into a dresser? Well, this was uh, from a sewing store, and you put the, uh, the patterns in here. Well, I just simply sanded it down, painted it, same color as the rest of the place, monochromatic, and it fits right in. And finally, to check out the ceiling here, these are regular Christmas lights that he's poked through the acoustic ceiling here to create a dramatic effect above his bedroom. And those are some tips for wow. what you can do at home to really spice up your home for very little money. And Suzanne, is all that furniture edible too? <laughs> oh yeah, it tastes oh, just wow. like vegetables. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that looks amazing. That look, uh, tips I can try at home. I think I need a little help trying those <laughs> tips at home. I don't think so. What do you think, Jim? I, I, think, I think it'll work for you. Yeah. You think so? I, I think, yeah, a sparkly little ceiling in an aquarium. Yeah. It's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Well, Tom, where are you doing news? Let's have some news. Thank you, Patricia. The FBI says investigators only have a few clues in the weekend mail bomb killing of a New Jersey ad executive. Officials say they're just about 100% certain it's the same man who sent more than, uh, more than, uh, who has sent explosive packages since 1978, uh, about 16 of them. O.J. Simpson's lawyers are reportedly about to make a major change in strategy. CNN says the defense is going to challenge the admissibility of DNA evidence in front of the jury instead of at a pretrial court hearing. In South Carolina, the case of Susan Smith heads to a grand jury today. You may remember Smith is the woman who staged the kidnapping of her two young sons but later confessed to drowning them. An annual Good Housekeeping magazine poll shows former First Lady Barbara Bush and Billy Graham are the most admired people in the U.S. And there's a high price to pay for getting seriously sick while visiting Tucson, Arizona. The fire department charges non-residents $205 plus $5 a mile for an ambulance ride to the hospital. By the way, if during that ambulance ride you want therapy, that's an extra $175. That's a look at some of today's actual stories. And now, what are we going to do? We're going to check the weather. Jim, what's the weather today? Send me either well, one of them. That's right. We got, we got snow. We got rain. We got snow. We got rain. Let's look at those high temperatures. Okay, as you can see, the high temperatures are pretty low. It's going to be cold just about any place you are, except in Key West and Miami. And that's the weather. So, Here Tom, comes. let's go. We're doing yeah. that time. I was, you were doing a few more push-ups, well, you know right? Yeah, you know what it is. We, we're getting to that point on today's show. We've got God Street Wine here. We've got our Tuber Christmas band. We've got a number of uh, people who are actually just in here to keep warm. Uh, <laughs> and we got to the point where you can't move all that well. And so. we're, we're approaching our warmer, occupancy limits here. So, hold on. What, Bob? We're approaching our occupancy limits here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's hear a little mailbag music, maestro, if we could. If we use your fax or letter, you get one of these. Now, I have to sort of uh, cozy up to the people to make the shirts a little bit. One of these fine designer 100% cotton shirts. Who wants a bunch of logos when you can have just one? It worked for Izod. Yeah. Okay. Simplicity. Right. It yeah. worked for Lacoste. And yeah. they really soak that water up when you wash down your car. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We have a letter. Yeah. It's to FX and the gang. Okay. It says, I hope you like this. I made it out of leather. Can you please hang it up? Have you received my that? other letter yet? And can you tell Captain Kangaroo to call me? Huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Captain Kangaroo. Uh, hey, big pockets. Yeah. Call me sometime. Right. This Man, is we from... know he's into leather. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, Wanda Johnston from Daytona Beach, Florida. Thank you, Wanda. <laughs> Look at this. It says, hey, I finally figured out why Jim covers his face with that newspaper. He looks like this. He's Bob's father. <laughs> now, it, it's funny, Jim. It does look like you. Except he's got two eyelids. That's now, right. Now, is this also from, uh, who is this? Tim, this is Tim Adkins. We don't, where's Tim from? Do we know, Helen? Um, Springfield, Illinois. Now, Tim did a, a cartoon version of all of us. My my buck teeth are not that big. <laughs> they're just they're just looking like an errant beaver in this thing. No, but you got your height right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think you look good there. You think so? Oh, good heavens! If you want to, uh, uh, you know, pictorially insult any of us. Uh, where do you, where send it? Write to us at breakfast time, P.O. Box 824, Madison Square Station, New York, New York, 10159-0824. Or call us at 212-802-4054. Or fax us at 212-802-4054. Or call us at 888 Coming up, uh, well, we've already done the battle of the bands between the tuba Christmas people and God Street Wine, so we won't revisit that. Yeah, there, were, there were no winners, by the way. We will uh, hear God Street Wine and more when breakfast time continues. It's 21 minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to Breakfast Time with Tom. Patricia sitting in for Lori. Bob the puppet and me, Jim. I'm the announcer. And here's Tom. Fans of the internet know where to find our next guest. Uh, fans of our next guest are also called Winos. This is their, <laughs> it's true, yeah. this is their first release and also the first release on 11 Records, right? Which is a brand new label at David Geffen who's an up-and-coming young billionaire, <laughs> yeah. is, uh, is starting its uh, $1.99 romances. God Street Wines here. How about a hand? Yeah. Yeah. Yay! Gentlemen, a pleasure. Would you, would you introduce yourselves? I'm Dan. John. Low Faber. Tomo. Tomo. The fifth Marx brother. Yeah. Good, to, good, to, uh, <laughs> good to have you all here with us. You guys have been together for how long? Oh, really long time. Really long time. Since yeah. the late Since 1930s, yeah. Yeah. And, and I, now, how would you describe... Well, days. How would you describe... Right. How would you describe your music? Really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but how good? I mean, is it... Too good for work. Well it's worth good. the money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They well, use all the notes. <laughs> all the notes, they can play them, they can hit them. Uh, it's, been a, it's been called a mix of just about any style except maybe Klezmer. Uh, is what I just said. Yeah, there's a little Klezmer. Try to think about that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, now uh, are, where are you based? Are you based in New York City? Just, uh, just north of here, actually, uh -huh. in Westchester. Yeah. Uh, and, and you deliberately moved out of the city? Yeah. We right. did, yeah. Well, why is that? Well, money. Yeah. <laughs> or, or a lack thereof. Or, or, yeah. Yeah. No, we had too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll fix that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and on the internet, now you, you're there regularly. I love uh, the, the computer online services, so I'm, I'm on them a lot myself. But uh, you correspond with your fans a lot on the internet? Yeah, kind of whenever we get a break. You jump in anytime you want. Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm he's, right in here. He's, oh, he's, the, he's the strong, uh, silent yeah, one. Is that right? <laughs> Try to keep it down. You're waking the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. That happens a lot oh. when we play shows, too. <laughs> <laughs> right? well, you're going to play a little something from uh, $1.99 Romances? That's yeah. right. This is Nightingale. The current yeah. CD. God Street Wine, everybody. And for the tuba players, this is an F. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, and... Three, five. Well, hey, young girl, staring at me, smiling so mysteriously. Your eyes so shiny and your lips so red, do you know this tune playing in my head?
Sing it to me someday. Sing it to me day after day. And I want you, darling, and I don't want nobody but you. It's 14 minutes to the top of the hour. Welcome back to breakfast time. Here's Patricia. John, are you awake over there? I am. We got so much music. We got God Street Wine here in their CDs. Yeah. 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 Nonsense romances. Right there. This is it. And they're here, and we've got, now don't you guys start resting on your laurels, because we got more tuba music coming up here from the Tuba Christmas Players. Right now, Patricia, a very special, solemn moment in our proceedings. That's right. What should we do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this There's is so much crazy stuff going on. There must be something going on in the stars. Maybe Russell Grant can help us. Huge helping of Mars can give you so much vitality. So better get ready for this red hot planet to change signs and energize an unsuspecting part of your world. Let zip with zest. Sagittarius, if you think you're going to get where you want in life, you'll be very much mistaken. Slow but sure progress is a much better bet. Capricorn, any travel or connections with cosmopolitan companies or people will be right up your street, bringing surefire success and rapid happiness. Happiness. Aquarius, the look of love could easily turn to the green eye of envy. So whether it's coming from you or directed at you, it ain't necessarily so. It's also unnecessary. Pisces, act or speak in haste. Repent at leisure today. So before you jump out of the frying pan into the fire, hold your horses and heed your deeds. Aries. You've all the energy, enterprise, and enthusiasm needed to move mountains of work now, but watch out for minor cuts, burns, or scalds. You're accident-prone. Taurus, why not be a sheep? Why follow the flock? You know, you're not a sheep. Strike out on your own now, and you'll get precisely where and what you want in life. Go ahead on your own some, Gemini. Step into a family breach and sort out any problems, hassles, or difficulties before they erupt into a major domestic split. Cancer, don't keep a brilliant brainwave to yourself when by spreading it about a bit, you could end up well on the road to fame and fortune. Mmm, Leo, if you play the shrinking violet or hide your light under a bushel, you haven't a hope in hell of attaining your aims. Capture the attention of people in power or with influence. Virgo, as mighty Mars moves his muscle behind your sign, so suddenly you're given a greater strength and drive to achieve your self-interests and life ambitions. Libra, watch your subconscious, which is, which is apt to play tricks. Don't divert your energies inwardly by becoming bitter or hurting yourself. Scorpio, make changes for a brighter, better future, made even easier by the help of a male friend or masculine influence around you. Find that guy. Guy. Now, if it's your birthday, you have more get up and go in your career in the next year than you've had in ages. And you are my star of the day, Virgo. Just like Nancy <laughs> Dixon Welsh of my own. You found zest to zip through life with style and put your raunchy sex appeal to good use, too. Do <laughs> Lou. Yes. Yes. Give us that Virgo strut again. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> the star of the oh, day yeah. strut. Yeah. That's right. That's my ranger, too. That's right. He's almost segueing into Ed Grimley there just a little. <laughs> Gina Hankin, our FX yeah. shrink, is here with us. Hey. A stationary shrink. 175 an hour in the van. 
How about that? I've asked Bob to get me one uh, right now. Bob's <laughs> real. Now, the reason we asked you here today is to referee between the tubas and God Street. What? No, no. Actually, to talk about holiday stress. Now, I was telling you that I go into a period of, of holiday paralysis mm -hmm. where I refuse to believe that the that Christmas is coming and that I really got to go through the gift list and do all these right. all the stuff. And I'm, and I'm still a little bit in that grip, though we did get the tree yesterday. Is that common? Oh, it's very common. You're refusing to face it because you obviously have very high expectations of what it ought to be like. Yeah. A massive production. So my suggestion is that you lower your expectations immediately. Mm -hmm. Now, kids won't notice if you don't do as much, put every decoration on the tree, even have as many presents. I mean, how many do they open anyway? Well, lower your expectations. Start now. Make it easy on yourself. So if we just ignore it completely, it'll just... Well, we can no. do that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's probably true. Now, how do you... Now, do you go through any stress, or are you so wise from your years of uh, dispensing advice that you are completely free from it? No, I go through some, too, but I, I overcome it by starting early. Yeah. And if and what I haven't done, I don't do. There's two things. I start early, yeah. and I get to a point when I haven't done, I don't do. If I don't send everyone in Europe a Christmas card, I don't do it. Uh -huh. But I send them a New Year's card. You right. know, you can make up for it later. Gwen? That's a good idea. Now, you, are you one who suffers any holiday stress at all? No, I try to start a little early, but this Christmas card thing always, oh, yeah. you know, I got like 300 people on the list, you right. know, and it takes a while to do it. So, so when can I expect? Well, <laughs> how about you? Uh, I like the holidays, and I like walking around and seeing people in good cheer and the decorations and all that, but I don't usually partake, so it's kind of, well, I don't do partake, you but I you don't. It. You don't buy anybody a gift? Um, you don't? Just himself. I don't really get into I don't really get into the whole thing, but yeah. I appreciate it for what it is. Yeah. But I don't he goes necessarily... crazy. He drinks different water. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't decorate my house and do the tree and the whole yeah. bit, but I enjoy you know seeing decorations and seeing the lights and the store displays and what have you. So, so when you kick back, you actually just take water from any tap at random. Oh yeah, I'm a mad yeah. tap. That's right. Now, Bob, You're how about and you? Crazy guy. Well, Tom, what I do is I reserve all my shopping till Christmas Eve. Yeah. Because it, yeah. You know, there's no pressure, and I bring a little red pen and I do my own mockdowns. It saves the time. <laughs> <laughs> and he gets free use of a car every week. I'll tell you. Yeah, so that really is a key thing, I would think, is to lower expectations and not try to make it a... And not feel guilty about it. Mm -hmm. Because if it's the right thing to do for you, then it's the right thing to do. And it may not yeah, be right for the kids. Happy. It may not be what your mom did, but you've got to not feel guilty about it. Yeah. Just do less. We're all busier these days, I think. Yeah. So yeah, do less. Could I borrow that just for a second? What's the matter, Michael? What's the matter? What do you want us to get? You want to get the police car? No. No? I I'm talking to him. You're talking to Bob? Yeah. So butt out, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know one present we can cross off my <laughs> list. <laughs> See the hang on. Uh, just yeah. 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 Yay. What else is coming up on this gap fest, Jim? Tubas and guitars and drums. Oh, my. Tubas and guitars and drums. Oh, my. And here's the whole gang. And if you're just joining us, yes, we're surrounded by tuba people. <laughs> the attack of the tuba people. Uh, we want to thank Phil Kogan in Flowers View, Florida, with midwife Gladys Milton hey. this morning. Phil? Thank you very much, uh, Tom. Had a really incredible experience here this morning. Gladys Milton, look for her on a uh, feature film that is currently in development and also her book. And uh, I would like to thank all the families for coming out this morning. All the children who have been brought into the world through the love and affection of Gladys Milton. Thanks, Phil. Bye, Su Tom. Yes. Suzanne Wong is with us in Portland, Oregon, at the home of the creator of the Garden Burger. Suzanne? That's right. I'd like to say thank you to Paul Wenner, who's changed <laughs> out of his fancy duds into a Generation Veg t-shirt. I'd like to thank Claire Worley, uh, the PR person for Wholesome and Healthy Foods. And don't forget, eat your garden burgers. You can eat healthy, and it's easy to prepare. And you can really change your home into something spectacular using recycled and secondhand stuff. And tomorrow we're going to be at Will Vinton's Claymation Studios, the guy who developed the California Raisins commercials. Oh, great. Oh, All right, Suzanne, thanks. Hold on just a sec, Bob, because we've got okay. a lot of mileage to go through here. Bob 
Michael okay. Kastner from E yeah. and CBS's hey. uh, Circus of the Stars this Friday. Also, uh, Bob Cirillo, our FX car guy. Where are you, Bob? Hey. He's hey. over there. Thank you, Bob. Sheena, our road warriors who are here with us. God Street Wine and our tuba Christmas orchestra uh, led today by Bill Troiano. Thank you, Bill, and thank you to tuba people. And uh, hey. two, two visits. And what's coming up tomorrow? Tomorrow Patricia? we have the Boys Choir of Har Harlem and Karen Duffy Duff from MTV and Lori's back. And how about a hand for yeah. Patricia? For yeah. 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 One of our Yay. producers, Anthony, his mother is here. Anthony, you're a, uh, Anthony's mom. What's your name? Leslie. Leslie, come on in, Leslie, quickly. And you, you sing? Yes. Is that right? All right. Yes. Can you sing? Is it A? What is it? A flat? A flat. God Street Wine and the Tubist and Anthony's mom. Where's Anthony? Oh, wait. <laughs> and okay, a little. We have, oh, so jingle bells. We got how many seconds? Five. Five? Okay, now would be good. Jingle bells. Get fast.